Howdy folks, Andrew here. Today I would like to teach you how to do synthetic division on the following problem. We got 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus 7x plus 6 is going to be divided by then x minus 4. All right. So the first thing is we have a little table here. All right. The uh, number of columns inside the table here is going to represent the number of coefficients you have in your dividend. Now, the so let's just fill that in. Okay. So we got 2 as the first coefficient. So we'll plug in a 2 there. Negative 6 as the second we got negative seven as the third and positive six as the last. Now, if you didn't have it, didn't go, if it didn't go x uh, cubed, x squared, x, and then constant, rather pretend that this was not there, all you would have done then was you would have plugged in a zero, okay, in, in that particular column. All right, easy peasy. Now, the all important question, what goes into this column? Well, we have to look then to the divisor for that answer. What you want to do is you want to find the zero of this particular function. Okay, now how do we find, or what does that mean when I say find the zero? What that means is that you want to find x, the value of x, that makes this particular function equal to zero. So you can set that on up, right? Just set it up as a simple math equation. So x minus 4 is equal to zero. If you had to solve that for x now, because that's what we want to do, it's simply going to be equal to positive 4. This number now is going to represent the value you're going to plug into here. Okay, positive 4. Cool. Now all we do, once we have this table set up, is there's a simple set of steps, aka algorithm, uh, that we need to follow in, in order to find now our coefficients down here for our quotient. Okay? First step, just simply drop down whatever first number you have here inside the synthetic division. It's going to be a 2. Okay? That's why I have a red box there. Then all you're going to do is you're going to take now this term outside and multiply it by the term down here, okay, at the bottom. And 4 times 2 is simply going to be 8. You're going to put that result in the next cell, okay? So that's going to be an 8. Then what you do is you add this column together. So uh, negative 6 plus a positive 8 is going to be a positive 2. Repeat the process. Take this number now, multiply it by that number. That becomes an 8. Plug it into this cell and add them together. That becomes a positive 1. Repeat the process. Take this number, multiply it by that number. That's a 4. Plug it into this new cell and add them together. That becomes a 10. Cool. Now, there's one more step you need to take into account. Not necessarily in this problem, but I should teach it to you in case the problem changes. I'm always thinking about what happens if the problem changes on you. Okay. So, um, if... The only way that this would, so what we would do at this step, okay, is I'm going to look back to my divisor, and I'm going to look at the leading coefficient here for x. Whatever it is, in this case it's a 1, whatever it is, I'm going to divide all the values by 1 except for the last value. Okay, the last value is going to represent the remainder. We don't have to worry about that. You're going to divide all of these other terms by that value. Now, obviously, everything divided by 1, who cares? It's the same thing. That's why nobody teaches it that way. They don't even say it. They just do it, right? But I'm going to tell you exactly how it works so that in case the problem changes, in case now, ooh, what happens if you have like a, you know, uh, a 3 here? Well, you're not lost. Just take all these, divide it by 3, and then those would be your new coefficients, okay? So, after we divided each of these by 1, we would have our new values, but obviously when you divide it by 1, it's the same thing. So, that's why I'm not going to show the math here. But now, these are your coefficients, and this is your remainder. Okay, so the way this works is like this now. You can think about it this way. Your remainder is always in the last column. Your constant is always then in the column next to the remainder. And then it's going to go x, x squared, dot, 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 dot. It could be x cubed, right? You would keep the pattern going. Okay? It's always going to work out that way, ladies and gentlemen. So now all you need to do is basically team these up. In other words, your first term in your quotient is going to be a 2x squared. And I'll put it on the, yeah, I'll leave it over here, 2x squared. The next term is going to be a positive because it's positive. So it's a plus, 2x. 
your next term is going to be a 1 plus 1. And then your last term is the 10. It's positive 10, but what you have to do now, since you have a remainder, is you're going to take whatever value is in this column, whatever it is, and you're going to put it over whatever your, let me erase this, whatever your, well, what happened? Whatever your divisor was, okay? So that's an x minus 4. So you're going to plug an x minus 4 there. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. This would be considered the quotient. Now you can always check yourself, right? You can always check your work. How would you check your work? Well, I would do it in this way. Let's change the color. Basically, the problem was this. You took this function, divided it by this, and you achieved this result. In other words, I'll write it small, but it's going to be 2x cubed, 2x cubed, minus 6x squared, minus 7x plus 6, all divided by x minus 4, and that better equal now 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. Sorry, I'm running out of space. I'm just going to write it beneath plus then. 10, 10 over x minus 4. All you have to do now is just make up an x value. Let's use x is equal to 0 to make it simple. And to quickly do this, everywhere you have an x, right, if it's multiplied, you're just going to get rid of it. Okay? So get rid of it, get rid of it, and that goes bye-bye as well. So what are you left with? Positive 6 on the top, negative 4 in the bottom. On the left-hand side, what are you left with over here? You're left with just, oops, a 1 plus then 10 over negative 4. Let's simplify. Okay, this becomes a negative, negative 3 over 2. And let's simplify this, right? If you had to simplify that, what would that work out to be? That would work out to be now a 5 over 2, right? But it's negative. So in other words, you would have to just change that, okay, to a minus sign. Now you're like, oh my goodness, oh, I thought this was done, right? No, well, now you got to find common denominators, okay, to add those two or subtract those two uh, fractions on that side. So remember, 1 is the same thing as saying 2 over 2. And 2 over 2 minus 5 over 2 is now going to be what? Remember, you keep the denominators. It's actually going to equal what's 2 minus 5? Negative 3. So wait a minute, negative 3 over 2. They are indeed the same. So that's how you would go about and check it, okay? And as you can see, it definitely works. Isn't it beautiful? It can approach every single problem you get with synthetic division like this. The one assumption also uh, is the fact that you're dealing with a linear divisor. In other words, you're not dealing with like x squared or something like that. It gets a little more complicated if you have something like that, but that I would put into a different uh, video. All right, guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I really do hope this helps. Please remember to check us out. We got thousands of videos out there, not only in mathematics, but physics and chemistry as well. And we have a lot more coming to you. Okay. Thanks for all the love and support. We really appreciate you. Take care.